What's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. So we're here at the FANUC booth with Mike Chico, who is the president and CEO. Thank you very much for having nice us. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming oh, over. Yeah. Robots. I know. Automation. It's, it sounds good, right? Yeah, you guys are making it happen. <laughs> this booth is massive. Thank it's you, awesome. thank you. But well, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. So yep. people are intimidated by robots and automation. And I'm always saying, like, you know, it is going to kill a lot of jobs, but it's going to bring forth more jobs and they're high paid jobs, right? right? You're yep. allowing the robots to do the menial work and mm -hmm. the repetition, but ro now you got people who actually program, who design the actual, you know, automation cells and uh, fixing these things is, you need that, guys doing that too, right? right? So there's Absolutely. a lot of jobs coming out. That's right, yeah. We've been trying to promote that mindset for a long time. You know, one of the jobs that people dislike in the factory floor is, is just monotonously loading and unloading a machine all day. You want to use your brain. You want to figure out how to program the robots, how to program this machine. So we're trying to take the monotonous work out of it. But in terms of doing that, we have to make it nice and easy to use. So, and, and we also have to make it portable. You have this big asset here, costs a lot of money, right? Yeah. And you don't want to have to always dedicate the robot just to this cell. Sometimes you might want to use this machine and do a, a quick runoff or a prototype or something, and you don't want the robot in front of it. Yeah. So in this particular case, we're trying to find ways where you can take a robot, put it in front of this machine sometimes, move it over to your, one of your other machines, okay. it can be completely flexible. Uh, you can see with our green color here, this robot's collaborative, so it works right along with the people. You don't need any fences with it. And uh, yeah, this is one of the most easy to use products that we have, we offer right now. That's awesome. So, you know, throughout the years, we've seen the big, these yellow robots and, and usually you see them behind the big screens and the glass but now as Mike just pointed out the green robots are collaborative so when they actually move you can just touch them and they'll just stop just like that mm -hmm. you can actually program them in seconds you can just put it into a teach mode and basically do something move it over and say like do that again repetition yep that's and right it's, and it's that easy it's to program it's just that easy yep. a lot of machine shops you're looking at these robots and it, they, they cost a little bit of money right not as much as the cnc machines in most most cases but how do you if, if i don't know if this job that i'm going to lock this robot to on this machine is going to last for six months or a year what if the job leaves then, then I'm out this money. I might might as well just have a machinist on this, right? By having this table set up, you can basically take this robot that senses off these fiducials, you put the robot in front of the machine, it knows exactly where it is, and it can just pick up on the program. And then a day later, you can take this robot, go to a different machine, set it up for a different job that was programmed. And now programmers are making good money because you're not only programming a CNC machine, but you're programming a robot. The pay scale goes up no matter where you're at in the world. Mm -hmm. if, if automation is building our parts in other countries, why not just build it in our own Absolutely. backyard, yep. right? Which actually, I would say, maybe it's not 100 employees for 100 companies. It might be 30 employees, but it's 100,000 companies because everybody can produce now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. It's awesome. a great message. And there's hundreds of thousands of small shops out there that are maybe a little bit afraid of automation. Maybe yeah. they think that the people that work in their factories can't quite get to it. And this is a nice, easy way to start. Um, we make the biggest uh, collaborative robot, so we can we have one that can pick up to 70 pounds. So you can start to automate some pretty big parts with that weight. But um, as you get bigger, obviously you're gonna need a much bigger robot and that gets you out of that collaborative range and into the other ones. But it's a cool. great but, icebreaker to get into. at 70 pounds, you can have somebody that's sitting there that's working on something and then just use the robot, boom, picks this thing up, moves it over to a conveyor or something, sends it on its way. And that is collaboration. That Absolutely. Is finest, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's awesome. So, Mike, this is collaborative. Yep. What else is hot in this booth? Well, we're going to have to take a walk and oh, I'll show man. you some other things. All right. So, um, previously we talked about when the parts are actually machined, right? But what happens after that? You still have a lot of monotonous labor that's sitting there, maybe deburring parts by hand all the time. Really boring job, bad on your wrists, bad on your arms. So, why don't you start to use that automation for that? And instead of having a person that's doing the monotonous job all day, again, we're training the next generation of manufacturing worker to come in and do something advanced. This is using a camera system to actually find a part. It doesn't have to be fixtured. 
and then once it finds it, which it's doing right now, then the robot's actually gonna go in and do the finishing operation on the awesome. R2. How, how long does it take? Like how many seconds does it take to actually find it? So. Um, it, it really, it's in a matter of milliseconds. Milliseconds. Yeah, so it's it's, okay. it's down below a second to actually find it. So this one's actually deeper in the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now we're actually, we went in, it's just sitting flat on the table, and it's we're like, actually it's deeper like in the park. It's at an angle, and it just knows exactly where to go. Yeah, we purposely made it at an angle to show that it can be picked up and uh, it can be placed in any different direction. Oh, that's huge. That's awesome. And not only that, um, bringing in the 3D CAD CAM companies, we are taking uh, 3D CAD and using that to actually program the pathway. So you take in the CAD of the part and that automatically works with the robot to go in and actually generate the initial program. And then the robot can come in and modify if the machining, if the casting's a little bit bigger in certain areas, then the robot actually fixes it using the camera. Absolutely, so yep. we actually work with Power Mill. Okay. Yeah, and Delcam, and they actually have a great uh, system for programming the robots, and I know that they actually, a lot of your robots are used. That's right, yeah, Delcam and us have a great relationship. Uh, you find it in CAD, it gets put into a robot programming, and really all the hard work of the programming gets done automatically from that. Awesome, aspect. that's great. Yep. Teaching kids. You got like the babies, it's like yeah. twins. That's it. You know this what I mean? Like, one of, the, one of the things that we're trying to do is actually get robots into schools, um, all the way down to the high school level, high school level and the two year associate's degree level. And so we've made custom cells and they're dedicated to really just teach uh, students how to start with this so that when they're coming out of high school or when they're coming out of an associate's program, uh, they can actually use the robots uh, right off the bat and have those skills coming right out of school. Awesome. And then Mike, you got like the beast right here, right? Oh, yeah. This is like a, I don't even know what to call it. It's a beast. So so how much weight can a robot like this? So this, this is the biggest robot in the world. It has the longest reach. It has the biggest payload. This robot itself can pick up just about 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds. Yep. And it must be at least 20 something yeah, feet high. Yeah, the reach high. is just about 20 feet. 20 feet. Yep. That's crazy yeah, so, so so who uses a robot like this you know when we came out with this robot we actually started in our own factories so we do all of our own machining for all of our own products and the bases of the machine tools needed to get machined and we needed to use cranes to do that and our chairman said we better have a robot to tend those machines just like we do the other machines so it was that concept at first and then it's been amazing all the different other processes that have come out. You can see here, obviously if you have really big parts, you need a really big robot. But it's used in automotive, where we're actually moving completed vehicles from one spot to another in factories. We're doing it in the rail industry, moving around rail cars and rail wheels and things like that. Pretty much anything you can think of where you have to pick up a lot of weight and move it pretty far, you can use a robot like this. That's awesome. Yep. It's almost like a alien meets horror movie meets <laughs> technology where you got like the big beast and you got the little mini me's down yeah, here and then the collaborative and you guys are just doing massive things and yep it's awesome thank no, you so absolutely. much for your time thank you for your time and awesome, thank you for man. what you're doing for the industry where it's really doing a great job you're welcome and thank you for like hooking all the schools up with these robots right here it's a future manufacturing that's awesome all, all right, right. Thank thanks you titan much, i appreciate the appreciate time it. thank cool. you